Right, welcome back. And uh, to highlight the uh, this uh, recent uh, meeting and this ministerial um, a meeting in Riyadh, we have with us over the phone His Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, a former Assistant Foreign Minister. Good afternoon to you. Good Fine, thank you so much. And um, let me take here uh, the agenda of uh, the follow-up uh, uh, bilateral committee of Egypt and Saudi Arabia and uh, the importance of such a meeting that, and the timing of um, this ministerial uh, meeting. This is a very uh, important traditional uh, uh, way of uh, uh, managing our relations. We have the ministerial level, we have the summit, of course, with the presidential level, we have the ambassadors. So this meeting is very important. It comes uh, twice a year to follow up what is going on between the two uh, old countries, because Egypt and Saudi Arabia have long history since, of course, the, uh, Amr ibn al-As, when he came to Egypt. And then since Muhammad Ali, we are almost uh, very close and almost one country. Since Gamal Abdul Nasser leading the uh, Arab nationality, now we, we, we have a very active president who is almost visiting everywhere. And I, I am happy as an old diplomat to see that all these consultations are taking place because it, it, it's building a sort of one uh, co organized and co 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 organized uh, Arabic front. I, I recall uh, the, the Jeddah meeting with, uh, with nine Arab countries, including Egypt, uh, Jordan, uh, Iraq, and the six Gulf states, where they met uh, the American president, and they make uh, a very good Arab position, made, made the American president change his position from asking to build uh, an Arab NATO to f confront with Iran. We said Iran is not the enemy. The enemy is the one who is occupying Palestine, who is occupying the Golan in Syria, and who is uh, uh, threatening the Arab security. Mm. Um, this is an example to, to, sh to show and to see how the coordination between the nation and the Arab states is very important. Uh, now, I think uh, such meetings is discussing many, many issues, whether on the international level, the uh, economic effect of the corona, the economic effect of the war in Ukraine, all of us are affected by this, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively, and we are uh, for it. On the regional level, we have uh, a sort of several headaches. Uh, the Arab uh, countries are not all of them in good health. What is happening in Syria, in Lebanon, in Libya, Yemen, uh, Sudan, Somalia, all these countries need uh, from us uh, a sort of support, a sort of arbitration, and uh, we are for it. Then we come to the uh, bilateral level between Egypt and Saudi Arabia, where the Saudis are uh, uh, the largest investor in Egypt, and the trade between Egypt is uh, with uh, Saudi is the largest volume of trade among any two Arab states. All these are very interesting matters, very interesting files, and we are discussing it. And I think this, those meetings are to, to welcome any uh, opportunity in order to make it even more and wider and deeper, also to uh, uh, to deal with any challenge in order to face it collectively and to come to a much better situation. So, Your Excellency, here you, um, you spoke about uh, or you gathered all uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Egyptian-Saudi relations in one answer, but here we have to divide because there are a number of issues to speak about. First, the, uh, if we speak about uh, regional uh, challenges, and they are enormous, enormous in, in, uh, uh, in, in terms of the um, um, countries who are uh, uh, still or, or who need support to be able to uh, uh, um, 
uh, come back to their uh, regional rule. This is from one side. Uh, uh, there are other regional uh, challenges, including the, uh, the foreign interference in the domestic affairs and how to be able to, um, uh, um, to uh, uh, overcome uh, such uh, uh, interference. And uh, the third would be the security, stability, and prosperity of uh, regions in, in light of the many challenges that are facing them. So let me first take here the uh, important uh, uh, um, issues or the important uh, files that were put into uh, uh, on uh, 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 on the uh, or in uh, on discussion uh, on the bilateral discussions, particularly uh, the Palestinian, the Libyan. Uh, and Sudanese uh, files, because those are very important files. Please. You are right, but I, I must state here that it is not all the files are a sort of challenges. There are opportunities also, because I am of those who believe that the Arab world is still solid. Still, we have uh, the Arab League covering all our relations. We have a free trade area among the, 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 uh, all the Arab countries, the, the tax system is uh, very good. We have zero taxes between uh, all the Arab nations, no tariff uh, in our trade. And we are trying to, uh, to bring more and more investment. So this is the, the, the positive side of the picture. As you rightly said, of course, Libya needs a sort of arbitrator big countries in our size to help uh, Libyan to come to reason and to come to re realize that the one country is much better than tribes and parties. Same thing in Syria. So we are doing our best and of course these challenges are affecting our security, affecting our trade. We cannot go for trade to Syria for instance because it is which Syria you mean? There are different Syria. Syria is occupied by Turkey from the north, uh, by Israel in the, in the south, by uh, uh, Russian forces, by French forces. You, you don't know. So we have to, to get rid of this situation. Libya also is affected by the interference of the Osmanic Empire with the dreams of somebody who thinks that we are still a part of the Osmanic Empire. In Sudan, now, same thing. Uh, I, I am of the generation who lived with Egypt and Sudan as one country. Now Sudan left Egypt. Now Sudan itself it is divided in two countries. Each country is threatened by uh, another uh, division, division. So all, all, all these things are affecting our political and security uh, interests, and we are for it. I think uh, that's how it comes with uh, this meeting in order to coordinate what position we should take. Also, the bilateral level between Egypt and Saudi Arabia is very, very important. As I said, it is the largest investor, the largest uh, Arab trade uh, partner. And one thing I, I, I always mention, that is the Egyptian community in, in uh, Arabia Saudi, this is the largest uh, Egyptian community living abroad, and it is uh, the transfer of this sort of uh, Egyptian citizens which are giving their experience to the host country. It is the largest uh, uh, remittances we, we, we get from anywhere in the world. So I, I hope that we also talk about the right of movement, because this is one file which is not yet in good condition between the Arab countries. If you go to any Arab country, you have to wait for a visa, to wait for uh, several bureaucratic uh, requirements. We have to tackle all this because as long as we are tackling it, we are getting more trade, we are getting more investment, and more better life for all the countries involved in the process. Your Excellency, <clears throat> the current uh, uh, world Challenges has put the uh, the world uh, or or alliances in the uh, in, in the world in focus in terms of 
new alliances are shaping up uh, 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 new uh, uh, changes to the geopolitical uh, uh, scene that are uh, shaping up and that requires a kind of um, uh, um, unity among uh, Arab, if you can just uh, um, uh, hear me from the, 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 the phone and not from the television so we can hear each other, but okay, fine. Uh, how do you view that? How do you view the importance of uh, uh, unity uh, uh, um, among uh, Arab powerful countries in order to be able to uh, uh, confront the new uh, world balances that are occurring. Yeah, and uh, I, I am happy to talk about this because, of course, we need to be in very good uh, term with all the countries of the world. And here I must mention that I think that Cairo is the most uh, uh, welcoming uh, capital in the world for embassies. We have embassy from every single country in, in the world, and this means that we have good relations with every country in the world. This is very good. And we, we, I cannot imagine any country where we can have any problem. We, we talk on the ambassadorial level, the ministerial level, and the presidential level. Next, same thing you, you, will, you will see in Riyadh, full of uh, embassies from all over the world. So we can use this, of course, in order to make the Arab world benefit from our relations and to uh, accelerate the process because we, we have a lot to be done in order to make uh, profit from all these sort of relations. And we, we, uh, our president, if you follow his trips, he went from far east to uh, Tokyo in Japan, he went to the far west in Paris, he went to the north in New York, he went down in Africa, in, uh, many countries in Africa, all the Arab countries he visited, and really we, we gain again the uh, presidential diplomacy, which we, we, we were lacking for 20 years before the revolution, and now we are in full power of the diplomacy. We should use this uh, by Egypt, by Saudi Arabia, and other Arab countries who are uh, standing in good position concerning the foreign relations. And now we, we do not have enemies, and we are friends to everybody. And I remember when we recognized China, the new uh, Chinese Republic in 1955, the, the Americans were blaming the Mal Abdul Nasser to do that. Now, after 40 years of this history, uh, China became the first partner in trade with the United States. Uh, when we joined the General Agreement on Tariff and Trade, the GATT, the Russian and the Chinese blamed the Mal Abdul Nasser to join a such imperialistic organization. <laughs> China re uh, joined the GATT, uh, WTO, after 30 years of Egypt. Russia joined after 40 years of Egypt. This shows you, I am proud to say that, we, 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 with all terms, that Egypt was always right. And those who differ with us, they, they found themselves take the same way we chose half a century ago. This proves to you that we are on the right track, and I hope that we can use this more and more. Before we move on, let me uh, l let us take a break and we'll come back. Be the first to know. The news live at the site of the event. Information on events as they are happening. If it's breaking news, it's Nile TV.
Welcome back and um, uh, back to uh, Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi and... Uh, I can hear you. Your Excellency? I can hear you. So can you hear me now? No, yeah. Right, so we're back. And uh, let me hear, uh, um, repeat the uh, question. And we were speaking uh, about the importance of uh, um, uh, uh, the relations between Egypt and Saudi Arabia as two powerful uh, uh, countries in the, um, in the region. And uh, uh, the Egyptian Gulf relations at large and, uh, and how this reflects on uh, uh, important issues and challenges and threats that are facing uh, the, um, the region. Of course, it's very important because the Gulf, all the Gulf, Gulf states are in good situation, especially financially. So they are one of our main investment partners, our trade partner. And the good news is that our trade with the Arab states are making surplus in our balance of trade. This means that we're exporting more than we import. Also investment, they are invested tremendously in Egypt. And we are keen to double this. We need to make more efforts in order to make Egypt a sort of a good dimension for investment for the Arabs. Uh, yes. Uh, we're speaking here about the, um, the political arena. Also, we have to speak that economy shapes up, uh, uh, shapes up uh, politics. And hence, we have to uh, speak about existing opportunities between uh, um, or among the, uh, 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 those uh, Arab countries. And how can we boost such uh, cooperation and relations in order to be able to uh, reach the prosperity of our nations? Can you repeat that question, please? Yes, I can. I'm speaking about the importance of uh, um, economy, economy that gather uh, uh, um, lots of nations all together on all sides and that reflects on the political uh, also uh, side and how can we boost economic cooperation and relation between Egypt and uh, the... Uh, uh, you are touching very important uh, file here. Because I think the Arab countries made a good progress concerning their political situation. We started establishing the Arab League in 1946 with only seven independent Arab countries. Now we are 22. This means that we succeed to uh, get rid of the British colonialism, the French colonialism, and uh, we now we have relatively 22 free countries. On the economic field, we still have a long way to do. We are very good in trade, but not good enough. We are very good in investment, but not good enough. And this means that we are not doing also our homework. Egypt must do its homework. I, I, I always encourage to make our banking system much more better, to make our bureaucracy much more faster, because the investor is coming to your country or to our, or to our country and he would measure how many hours he would spend from putting his first million dollars until he gets his first one thousand dollars as profits and how we can move it all these things we have to take care of otherwise we lose good opportunities here and i think we are doing fine but not enough we should accelerate this process in order to make egypt much more able to receive uh, investments from abroad, whether Arabs or European or from anywhere in the world. Uh, Your Excellency, finally here, uh, as you raised up the issue of opportunities, so let me here take the, the, the existing opportunities among uh, those countries in order to uh, reach uh, the uh, acquired prosperity that we need for our nations. You know that we have the Arab League umbrella, then we have the uh, large Arab free trade area, and we have uh, sub-regional uh, communities. We, we, we do this because 
not all the Arab countries are at the level, economic level, or political uh, requirement to uh, join you in what you are seeking. That's why you have the Gulf states that are ahead of what the Arab League is doing. You have the, uh, what we call Agadir group. These are the Arab countries on the Mediterranean. They uh, make, make good use of their relation with Europe and they establish another free trade area between the Arabs who are uh, reaching the Mediterranean using the uh, European market. You have also now the alliance between Egypt, Iraq, and Jordan. This is uh, another. And uh, we are doing that. So I always say that if not the all Arab countries are ready to do what you are uh, aiming to, let us take the, the Arab countries who are ready, who have the politic political will, and they have the ability, economic ability, to join us for deeper and wider relations in the future. Right. That's the hope, um, and that's what we need to uh, achieve. I guess that brings us to the end of this uh, episode. Your Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, thank you so much for being with us and for your input thank here. Thank you. I'm sorry for the interruption. And uh, next Saturday will be another important Arab debate uh, or Arab um, topic. So until next Saturday, it's goodbye.